So you're a virgin. You're insecure about it. You worry that you'll never lose your virginity. You worry that there's something wrong with you. You worry that women will never like you. You worry that somehow you're a mistake and that you'll never lose this virginity. But I've worked with a ton of guys in my time as a coach and in my time on this channel and sort of the same consistent insecurities and doubts and pain points, so to speak, come up. So what we're going to do here is we're going to read out some of the things that actual virgins have said to me, or maybe some of the things that you might have in your head, some of the, the concerns and the worries and the things that are holding you back. And I'll give a little bit of advice for every single one of them. So there's about 15 different ones here. Let's get straight into it. The first one is, I feel like I am missing out on an important part of life that everybody else is experiencing. I have so many things that I can say to this. Probably the first one is you have this concept when you're a virgin or when you haven't had much sexual experience. So by the way, this video also applies if you've had sex, but just not a lot of it and you feel a little insecure about that. You have this concept that everybody else is just having all these wild fucking orgies and all of this sex and all of these threesomes in this crazy, amazing, good time. The reality is that the average person has sex with something like seven partners in their entire life. Most people aren't out there having as much sex as you think they are. And I understand the feeling of like everybody else has done this almost like a rites of passage, you know, this journey into adulthood or this foray into adulthood. And I haven't done it yet. There must be something wrong with me. It's like, and this ties into the second one that I'm going to read out in a second. <sighs> It's not that everybody else is having all this amazing sex and you're missing out. It's like if you had people who had gone to Disneyland and you just haven't gone to Disneyland yet. It's just a thing you haven't done. That is no reflection or that bears no reflection on who you are as a human being, your value, your worth as a man or any of that sort of stuff. You just haven't done something that other people have done. There's obviously solutions to that. It's like, okay, I just need to improve myself. I need to put myself out there and play the numbers game. And then I'll just do the thing that other people are doing. So a lot of the time we tie, especially as men, our value to how much sex we're having. And if we're not having any sex or we've never had sex, we immediately just assume, oh, that must mean I'm a failure at life. No, you just haven't done the thing that other people have done yet, which ties nicely into the second thing, which is... I worry that my lack of sexual experience means there's something wrong with me. No, in the same way that if you hadn't been to Disneyland ever and you had friends that had, there's nothing wrong with you. You just haven't done something that they have done. So it's a very simple solution. Okay, I just need to save money and plan and then go to Disneyland. The same thing here. A lot of the time, like I said, we tie our worth to whether or not we've had sex. But what I like to do with most of my or all of my virgin clients is I say to them, Let's sort of analyze what you have done so far to try and lose your virginity. And a lot of the time when you're a virgin, you will tell yourself this. It's not a lie, but you will tell yourself this story that like, I've been trying so hard. And when I actually get in there and analyze it again, when I work with my coaching clients on this shit and I get in there and I actually analyze what steps have you taken to lose your virginity? The answer is very little. It's usually sitting there pining for a certain girl wishing that she would notice you which isn't how you have sex, or it's, I've improved myself for a couple of months and that's it. Or I've talked to 10 women and none of them slept with me, therefore it's hopeless. Or even I've talked to a hundred women and none of them have slept with me and it's hopeless. I have never had a guy who is a virgin and tells me that, you know, I have talked to a thousand women or I've been improving myself for like 10 years and I have this elite, amazing body and I've worked on my social skills and I've worked on my confidence and women still won't sleep with me. No, that man doesn't exist. If you throw yourself into self-improvement, if you play the numbers game and talk to, and I'm talking literally a thousand women, if you go and talk to a thousand women, you will accidentally have sex. And so none of this is to blame you if you're sitting there as a virgin saying, fuck man, but I'm really trying, but it's, a gift that I'm trying to give to you to realize that you could be doing 10 times what you're currently doing. We all could. I could right now be doing 10 times what I'm doing to earn money or to work on my body or any of that stuff. We can all do 10 times what we're currently doing. And so realizing that there's nothing wrong with you. You just haven't gone all in. 
You haven't taken the steps that are required to have sex. And so you can sort of ask yourself this checklist of, have I improved myself for sometimes it takes years? Have I worked on myself for years? Like, do I have a great body? Do I have amazing style? Have I whitened my teeth? Do I, if this is something you're interested in, do I have tattoos? And if you're not interested in tattoos, don't get tattoos. Um, have I worked on my confidence, which is just talking to people. You can go to improv, you can go do karaoke, you can go and talk to strangers on the street. You can do something like an approach anxiety program like I did, you know, going through the checklist of self-improvement, have I done everything in there? Do I have friends? Am I social? All of that kind of stuff. If I'm not, let me just start working on that shit. The second thing is, have I actually talked to enough women? A lot of the time we have this crazy notion in our head that we can just talk to like five women and one of them will sleep with us. No, you need to be thinking in terms of hundreds or thousands of women, especially if you're really inexperienced and you're really nervous and you're shy and you struggle to even just hold a basic conversation, which is fine if you're at that point, you can improve it. But if you are at that point, you might need to talk to 1,000, 2,000 women because you might be so unbelievably crappy at it that... The vast majority of the time, you can't even say the basic shit like, hi, I think you're pretty. Would you like to get a drink with me? If you're at the point where you can't even say that stuff, which again is fine. I started at that point. Then you just are going to have to embrace the numbers game and start thinking in terms of hundreds or thousands of women that you talk to because you're not good at this stuff. You don't know how to hold a basic conversation. You probably haven't improved yourself enough to the point where you look really good and women are throwing themselves at you. And that's fine if you're not at that point. That's okay. Like I said, I started at a really, I won't say low point, but I had a lot of work to do myself, especially with my confidence and social skills and stuff like that. It's perfectly okay. But there's nothing wrong with you if you haven't had sex. You just haven't taken the steps. And a lot of the time we have a very unrealistic idea of the game, so to speak. We think, like I said, I can just go and talk to five women and one of them will sleep with me. It's like, no, nah, motherfucker, you might have to be talking to hundreds or thousands of women. It's a reason why, or there's a reason why most people don't have an abundant sex life and they don't have a lot of money and they don't have a satisfying life and they have regrets and they're not happy. It's because they have an unrealistic expectation of what it takes to reach success. They're, they're thinking in terms of days or weeks or months instead of years or decades. And so zoom out a little bit and think more about your long-term plan. If you're someone who's sitting there as a virgin thinking like, fuck, I want to lose my virginity like today, otherwise I'm going to be sad. No, start thinking more in terms of years in terms of self-improvement. Now, that isn't to say that it's going to take you years to have sex. In fact, most of the virgins, I'll just go ahead and say all of the virgins who've signed up with me for coaching, we get them laid within two, two to four weeks. Some of the slower ones take like maybe a couple of months. I think the slowest guy I ever worked with took like three months. So you can do it much quicker than years, but start thinking in terms of years when it comes to self-improvement, right? At the start, you're going to be messy. It's going to be messy. You don't really know what you're doing. You're not confident. You don't actually know all the steps that you're going to need to take to have a lot of sex. And so you need to be thinking longer term and putting in the work that is required to get that to that amazing, abundant sex life. Now, the third concern or doubt or fear or insecurity that a lot of guys who are virgins or just inexperienced have is that they're scared or worried that people will judge them or ridicule them for their lack of sexual experience, especially with women, right? Like a lot of guys will sort of, they're really scared of, even if I get to the bedroom, even if I do all that difficult stuff, I do the self-improvement, I put myself out there, I talk to hundreds or thousands, and it doesn't necessarily take thousands. Let me take, make that really fucking clear. I'm just saying it's, you're almost doing it as a safety thing. You're saying, okay, like I might have to talk to thousands of women before I have sex. That's okay. Like you're, th you're thinking more long-term, right? I'm trying to get you to not just think I need an instant, immediate fucking fix to this. Like think a little bit, like you have time, basically. You have enough time to talk to thousands of women. You'll be okay. You'll eventually lose your virginity, but you can do it quicker than that. Anyway, a lot of guys are thinking, you know, I put in all this effort. I put in all this work. I go and, and talk to a lot of women or I go on Tinder and I upgrade my pictures and I follow, you know, Andy's amazing Tinder guide. Link in the description to that. It's completely free. You know, I do all this stuff. I get a woman on a date. We're having a great time. I overcome all of my nervousness and all of the fears and the doubts and the insecurities and all that shit. We go on a couple of dates. I take her back to my place. What is even the point of having sex? Because she's going to know that I'm a virgin and she's not going to like me and she's going to think I'm a loser and I'm not going to do a good job. And what if she judges me? And what if she says I'm shit? Blah, 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 blah. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. 
slow down, cowboy. Nobody said that you had to be good at sex your first time. You fucking did. You invented some ridiculous fucking dream world where you would be good at sex the first time you've ever had it. No. Why the hell would that ever be the case? You're probably going to be completely shit. Or you're going to be nervous. You're going to be inexperienced. You're not going to know what to do. You're going to be in your own head. All of that stuff. Hence why I push across to you guys all the time. Give yourself permission to suck. Like, it's okay if you suck the first time. In fact, embrace it. Be honest about it. Be very fucking honest and authentic and literally say to her, and this is what I get all of my virgin or just inexperienced clients to do. You literally say to her, like, you say this before the date. Yo, I, I haven't had a lot of experience, but I'm super keen to learn and explore. I'm just so excited to try a bunch of different stuff with you. See what you like. See what I like. Like, I really want to explore. I want to try a lot of kinky stuff. I want to, you know, have a sexual bucket list and see what's on your bucket list. I want to explore. I want to play with toys. I want to do all this kind of stuff. You get really excited and get her excited about this stuff. Don't just say like, oh, I'm a virgin. I hope that's not bad for you. I, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like, don't be ashamed of the fact that you're a virgin. That's not attractive. Don't feel guilty that you're a virgin. That's not attractive. And again, this fear of, you know, I'm scared people will judge me or ridicule me for my lack of sexual experience. Motherfucker, you're probably the one doing that. You're probably the one judging yourself and ridiculing yourself for being a virgin. You are. And then you're putting that, you're projecting that onto other people and saying, I'm scared that guys will laugh at me or my mates will laugh at me or women will judge me. It's like, motherfucker, if you want other people to respect you, if you want other people to think highly of you, if you want other people to at least just not judge you, you have to fucking go first. It is your responsibility to stop judging yourself. And how many of you right now are inexperienced or you've had a little bit of experience, but not a lot. You're sitting there judging yourself. You're holding yourself to this insanely fucking high standard of I should be a sex god and I should, you know, no BDSM and I should be good at everything and I should pleasure her and I should make her orgasm and I should be cool and she should stick around and I should be able to do all of this stuff. It's like fucking hell. That is an impossibly high standard. And then you're judging yourself for not meeting that standard. So if you want other people to not judge you or ridicule you, you go first. Let's start with you. Hey, let's, let's clean up our own homes before we expect other people to fucking do what we're not willing to do ourselves. So the, the, the final thing I can say here is I promise you the vast majority of women are nicer than you think. And if you're just honest and authentic and you say, yo, hey, look, I don't have a lot of experience, but I'm so fucking keen to explore. I'm like, I want to try stuff. I want to learn. I want to grow. I want to explore your bucket list. I want to make you feel good. I want to learn how your body works and all of that. I promise you the vast majority of women, I'm talking 95% will go, wow, that sounds amazing. Like most guys don't give a shit about my pleasure. Most guys couldn't give a fuck about me feeling good. You're literally telling me you want to spend your time learning how to make me feel good. You're basically a student and you're saying, look, I'm here to fucking learn. I want to get amazing at this shit. The vast majority of the guys are so fucking shit scared of ever embracing the fact that they're not good at sex, that they put this mask on and pretend that they're good at sex. And they pretend that they're an expert and they pretend that they know what they're doing because they're too fucking scared or ashamed to say, I don't really know a lot about sex or I haven't really tried BDSM. I've never really tried kinkier stuff. They're too scared to ever admit that shit because they're putting on this fucking facade of trying to pretend that they know what they're doing when they don't or when they're just average at sex. It's why the vast majority of women that you have sex with, if you embrace these concepts of learning and exploring and admitting you don't know things and then trying to get better, the vast majority of women that you sleep with will say, wow, you put in way more effort than any other guy I've ever been with. You make me feel way better than any other guy I've ever had sex with. You blow my fucking mind. And you'll be sitting there going like, but I don't even know what I'm doing. And she's like, exactly. That's why you're doing a good job. Because you're admitting you don't know, and then you're trying to improve. Whereas the average guy is so fucking focused on hiding the fact that he doesn't know everything when it comes to sex, that he's just pretending he knows. And he's just sticking to the same fucking boring positions. He's not trying toys, because if he tried toys, he would have to admit he doesn't know how to use the toys. He would have to admit he has to learn the toys. And so he doesn't. So he just sits there and... He has his little one track fucking thing that he does every time. It's always the same one note, the same positions, fucking thrusting for three minutes. And then he fucking comes and he goes, how was that for you? And she's like, yeah, that was good for me. Ha ha ha. Because he's too scared to actually admit he doesn't know. And so the thing that you're terrified of, which is what if she finds out that I don't have experience, that's your superpower. 
you're looking at it like it's a negative. Come on, motherfuckers. You've followed my channel for long enough to know that we're here to play to win. We don't hit, sit here and go, oh my God, I hope I don't lose. We're here to play to win. How do you play to win? You take your fucking supposed weaknesses and you turn them into a superpower. You turn them into a strength. The fact that you don't have a lot of sexual experience is your fucking superpower. Because again, like I said, to really drill this in, it means that you'll try harder. It means that you'll be willing to learn and explore. So be very honest about that. And my virgin clients that I've worked with, I promise you, you will have the same experiences as them. I will say 95% of the women that they have been with have been just unbelievably kind and understanding and if anything excited because like i said if you're bringing that excited energy and saying i'm super keen to learn i'm learned to, uh, i'm keen to try things i'm keen to try some different sex toys and bdsm and i'm keen to explore your body and see how it works and i will take my time with you i want to really take my time and spend like hours just exploring you i promise you 95 percent of the women will go holy shit that's amazing now five percent will say Look, I'm really sorry, but I'm probably looking for a guy with more experience. Brilliant. Good. Great. She knows what she wants. Isn't that fucking awesome? You guys just want different things. You can go separate ways and you can find the next woman who will be happy that you're willing to explore and learn and grow and all of that kind of stuff. So it's not about winning every single person. Like, obviously, we can't make everyone in the world like us. They just won't, no matter what. It's about finding the people that are excited in the same way that you're excited to learn and grow and there are plenty of women out there who don't have a lot of sexual experience i'm going to say the majority of women don't have a ton of experience when it comes to like bdsm and toys and exploring their body and learning how to have multiple orgasms and all of that kind of shit the vast majority of women haven't really explored all those things because the vast majority of guys don't want to bring that shit up because they're worried about their own lack of or their own sense of inadequacy so that's your superpower embrace it and as for how to actually explore stuff in the bedroom, really, really, really just give yourself permission to suck. And what I like to do is pick a body part of hers and just in your brain, think of like a billion different things that you could do related to that body part. So if you really have like no sexual experience and you're like, I don't even know what to do, just pick the first part of her body that you see. Maybe it's her neck. And then you go, what are like 50 just weird things that I can try with her neck? And you don't need to be smooth. You don't need to be good. You just tell her, close your eyes. So then she can relax a little bit. And so then you can relax because she's got her eyes closed and she's not looking at you and she's not expecting, you know, you to be good or smooth. She's, you can take your time a little bit more and you pick her neck and you go, what if I try kissing her neck? What if I try kissing her neck hard? What if I try kissing her neck gently? What if I try licking her neck? What if I try licking different parts of her neck? You know, the side the front, the other side, behind the ear? What if I try biting really gently with just a couple of my teeth? What if I try biting with all of my teeth really gently? Like, don't fucking draw blood. What if I just caress her with my hand? What if I try gently choking her? Be really gentle if you've never done it before. So, so don't choke. The point is, what if I just put my hand there and squeeze just gently? What if I just gently caress her neck? What if I just play with her ears? You can think of like 50 different things to do with just that body part. And you don't have to know when, whether any of them will feel good. In fact, you're going to find as you have more experience, as you have more sexual experience, every woman is different. And so you might kiss one woman's neck and she just goes fucking crazy. You might kiss another woman's neck and she giggles and she's like, wait, stop that tickles. And she won't let you kiss in it because it tickles. So you don't have to know what you're doing, but you just go through each body part. You know, then you could pick the nipples and you could do a million things with nipples. You can pinch them. You can pull them. You can twist them with your fingers. You can grab them with all of your hands. You can pull on them and let go. You can lick them. You can bite them. You can suck them. You can suck them at the same time as licking them. You can go from one nipple to the other. You can flick one nipple while you're licking the other. There's like a thousand things that you can do for each body part. And that's all foreplay is. You're just trying different stuff, experimenting, you don't have to know what's going to feel good. In fact, you can't until you've done it with that particular woman. You're trying all these different things. And every time she moans, oh shit, like maybe I can try more of that. And if she's laying there, just not really making any sound. Okay, I'll try something else. And you're just exploring and experimenting and trying a bunch of different things. You're trying literally like 500 different things and seeing which ones make her moan. And then you just do more of those things. Like that's it. That's all good sex is literally. And you can obviously ask for feedback and say, how does that feel? Do you want it harder? Do you want it softer? Do you want me to do more? Do you want me to do less? What would you like? What feels good for you? You can ask questions. Remember, this woman is on your team. A lot of guys, especially virgins, have women as this like prize that they have to please or 
They have to jump through hoops to please her or they have to like conquer her or something like they put her up on a pedestal instead of just realizing this is just another human being. You can ask her questions. You don't have to be this performing fucking monkey that knows exactly what to do and does a perfect job. You can just ask her, does that feel good? Do you want it different? That's it. That's all good sex is, is just fucking trying different things and seeing what feels good for the other person. That is literally all I do when I have sex. I just try a bunch of different weird shit and see what she likes. And the ones that, the, the things that she likes, I just do more of those. All right. So the next concern or fear that a lot of virgin guys have, and maybe you have this yourself, is I'm scared that my virginity means I'm not a, quote, real man. Yeah. Real man is such a nebulous term, right? There's a reason that I don't talk in the same way that a lot of people in men's self-improvement talk. Like I don't use terms like beta. I will never call someone a simp. I don't call someone an alpha. I, don't, I would never call you a cuck or a faggot or any of the words that people use to try and pull other people down and push themselves up. So this concept of like a real man or an alpha male, or I want to be James Bond, or I want to be smooth or confident or good. It's just a fucking invention. There is no such thing as a real man. And you sticking your penis in a woman doesn't make you a real man. There is no such concept of a real man. In fact, you get to define what you call a real man. And so you have to understand that everybody in society has their own rule book. In other words, everybody has their own set of rules that they go through life with or opinions or principles or whatever you want to call it, right? And so what is a real man to one person is going to be completely different to what is a real man to another person. In other words, one guy might say the definition of a real man has nothing to do with sex. In fact, it's how much can he care about his community and give back to the community. That's a real man. Someone else might say a real man is able to defend himself, right? So he has some amount of strength and maybe some amount of fighting ability, or at least he has like that inside himself and he could defend himself if he needed to. That's a real man. Some people will call that a real man. Other people will say a real man is a guy that can have a lot of sex. Someone else will say a real man is a guy that can make a shitload of money. Someone else will say a real man is a guy who's there for his children and he's amazing to his wife or his girlfriend. He's just, just a fucking selfless, wonderful, giving, generous human being. Someone else would say a real man is someone who looks out for other people, who looks out for the little guy. Like he'll step in if someone's being bullied. He will step in if an old grandmother needs to cross the road and he'll help her. So the point that I'm getting to is everybody has a different concept of what a real man is. And it's such a fucking nebulous term. And I would never hold yourself to some sort of standard of like, if I'm not doing this thing, I'm not a real man. It's like, well, somebody else would say that this is the thing you should be doing to be a real man. And then someone else would say, no, it should be this thing. And if you live your life by other people's definitions of what you should be, you're just never going to be fucking happy. And also when you have this concept of like a real man and you're, you're saying that I don't match up to that, you're just feeling shame. You're just feeling guilt. And shame and guilt are not fucking attractive to women. They're not attractive to anyone. They're also not very empowering. If you're sitting there feeling shame about who you are and guilt, are you going to go outside and talk to 100 women? No, because you feel ashamed and guilty. Guys, I want you to close your eyes for a little bit, pause the podcast, and think about how the times you've felt very ashamed like literally ashamed of who you are, like there's something wrong with you, like you're just embarrassed, you're just ashamed or guilty, like you've done something wrong, you're bad, that kind of stuff. In those moments, how fucking empowered do you feel? Like, do you feel like just slamming your table on your, your fist on the table and saying, I'm going to kick some fucking ass today? No, you feel like crawling into a, a corner. You feel like putting a blanket over yourself and hoping that nobody can see you and just saying, fucking hell, man, just let me sit here in the corner and die. Let me just call, curl up into a ball in the fetal position and just hope that nobody can ever fucking see me ever again. Like, let me just crawl into a cave and never come out. That's not empowering. And so if you use shame or guilt or this concept of like not being a real man, you're literally making it harder for you to then go out and have sex. You are making, you, you're doing it to your own detriment. What is actually empowering is saying, okay, here's what I'm excited about. I'm excited to have sex. I'm excited to explore, the, explore that side of myself. I am excited to improve myself. I am excited to meet some wonderful women and have some beautiful memories and really explore this side of myself and see what I'm capable of and see the pleasure that I can give another human being and connect with another human being. I'm excited to do this thing that I've always wanted to do. 
I've always wanted to lose my virginity. Man, I'm so, how fucking good is it going to be when I do it? Man, it's going to be beautiful. You get really excited about this thing. That is empowering. Guys, close your eyes and sit there and think about times in your life when you've just felt excited by something. Like you're a man on a mission. Like nobody could stop you. How much more action do you take compared to when you're feeling ashamed or guilty? You take a million times more action. And so never, 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 or as close to never as you possibly can, try not to ever use shame or guilt as a tool to get yourself to do something. Because it's just so short-lived. It's so hard to stick in there and talk to hundreds or thousands of women when you feel ashamed about who you are. So start thinking of those reasons that you're doing this. The exciting reasons. Think about how amazing your life is going to be. Write it all down on paper. Get excited about this shit. Fantasize about this shit. One of the first things that I get people to do when they join my coaching program is I get them to map out what it is that they actually want and sit there and write like 50 reasons why this is going to be amazing, why they're excited. I get them to use those positive forms of motivation and we quickly reframe any guilt or shame that they're feeling because we don't want them to sit there feeling guilty and shame because they'll just take a thousand times less action. So always think positively and it's not about that you're not a real man, it's that you're excited to do something amazing that's going to change your life, it's going to be beautiful, it's going to be great, it's going to be a rite of passage, you're going to feel like an adult, oh man, it's going to be so exciting. Get excited, don't let that fear or guilt or shame take you over. So the next one that a lot of guys have is that they say that they feel pressure, or I feel pressure to lose my virginity before a certain age or milestone. So for instance, before graduating college or before hitting 30, or for some guys it's before hitting 25 or some guys before hitting 35, whatever it might be. But the ones that usually come up are college and hitting 30. Those just seem so fucking arbitrary to me. They're just literal inventions because you watched too much TV. I understand them. I myself used to have all of these fears of hit, hitting 30 and I basically had a midlife crisis when I was like 29. Like I had a complete fucking breakdown. I was like, holy shit, next year I'm going to be 30. I don't have the sex life that I want. I have no fucking money. In fact, I have like, I think I had like $30,000 in debt. I have no idea how to make money. I work like entry level, low end jobs. You know, I just, I don't have the life that I want. I don't have a lot of friends. I'm not happy. I just ended my second long-term relationship. It was not a great relationship, although we had nice moments in it, but overall, you know, there's a reason I ended it. Holy shit. Like I'm going to be 30 soon. My life is over. And so many of my coaching clients come to me with the same shit, especially you guys in your twenties. You have this notion that when you hit 30, you're going to somehow be like too old to date or too old to work on making money. You're just going to be too old. And as someone who is 36, and at this point, a lot of my clients are even older than me. I've worked with guys who are like 59. I've worked with a guy or a couple of guys in their 40s, lots of guys in their 30s and late 30s. I'm telling you, and they will all tell you the same thing. Life gets easier when you're 30 if you've been self-improving, if you've been improving, you know, getting to that point. And if you haven't, that's okay. You can start right now. I didn't really start my self-improvement until 28. And I'd done little bits and pieces before that, but yeah, 28 was when I really got serious. So you can always start. Don't ever feel like you're too old. But I'm telling you, if you put in effort, your th 30s are a thousand times easier than your 20s. If you've been improving yourself, they are. And so, so many of you have this idea of like, man, I have to have the college experience. And, uh, you know, if I don't have sex in college, I'm never going to have sex. And it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? You have like 60 years minimum after college. Like, you don't think you're going to have sex in 60 fucking years? Yeah, you will. And if you don't, you'll just eventually go, fuck this. I'm going to go pay an escort. You'll pay an escort. You'll have sex and you'll go, wow, look, I had sex. Cool. I did it. So you're going to have sex. But I understand the fear as a 20 something year old because I used to have the same thing. And it's one of those things where there's two answers. The first one is improve yourself like crazy because then you don't feel so much like, oh man, I'm wasting my life or I'm wasting time or I'm missing out. If you're actually achieving your goals, and I've talked about how to achieve goals a million times on this channel, so I won't cover that again. But if you're achieving your goals, or at least working towards them and starting that process, you don't feel so much of this fucking pressure to do things before you hit a certain age, because you're like, yo, I'm fucking good. Like I'm making progress. I just need to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm good. Like I'm going to hit my goals by just continuing what I'm already doing. And as for losing your virginity before you're 30, 
I'm telling you from enough of my virgin clients who've been in their 30s when they first lose their virginity, it doesn't fucking matter if you're 30. Like it literally doesn't matter. It doesn't say anything bad about you. There's nothing wrong with you. You know, you're not like a bad person or a loser or not a real man because you're 30. Most of the girls won't give a shit. If you do what I said earlier in the video, you really embrace the fact that you're excited to learn, to grow, to evolve, to try different things, to make her feel amazing, like all of that kind of stuff. She's not going to give a fuck. I promise you, 95% of women won't care. Again, not all of them. Some of them will just say like, look, I'm really sorry, but that's just not for me. They'll be nice about it. They won't say like, ew, you're a virgin at 30, you're a loser, which I know is a lot of your fear. But again, to really drill this in, a lot of you guys who are virgins or just inexperienced, you have this fear, this terror that other people are going to judge you, especially women, that they're going to think you're a loser, that they're going to reject you, that they're going to be mean to you. Motherfucker, how many times have you said something negative to yourself about your own lack of sexual experience? You've probably judged yourself 10,000 times in the last decade. And then you're sitting there worrying that someone else might judge you once. Have some fucking perspective. Realize that the very thing that you're afraid of that other people are, you're afraid other people will do, you're doing yourself probably every fucking day, probably every day. And so stop that shit. Stop putting the pressure on yourself. Don't worry about what other people are going to do. If they're going to judge you, cool. Let them fucking judge you. It's not like they're going to say anything that you haven't said to yourself a billion times. So even if someone did judge you, which I promise you the vast majority of people will not, but if they did judge you, they've just agreed with you. You're the one sitting there judging yourself every single fucking day, feeling insecure, feeling guilty, feeling shame, feeling like you're not enough of a man or you're not good enough or there's something wrong with you or you're never going to lose it. If someone else judges you, hey, you're on the same team. You can shake hands and go, hey, we agree. <laughs> cool. We have some common fucking ground. So the very thing that you're terrified of, of other people judging you, it's like maybe you'd make a friend because <laughs> maybe you realize you have something in common. So don't stress about losing it by a certain age or a certain milestone. You have the rest of your life to have sex. I know it doesn't feel like that. I know, but I've worked with enough guys who are virgins or very inexperienced in their 30s who have gone on to have amazing sex lives. The, probably the best example of all of this is Ed, who at this point has had sex with, I don't even fucking know, like 50 women or something. And he was a virgin at 31 with incredible erectile dysfunction. And it took us like six months to help him work longer than that probably like a year or two to work through that erectile dysfunction. So he was having bits of sex, but half the time his dick wouldn't work, but he just fucking embraced that. And he did all of the stuff that I'm telling you here. He just fully embraced the fact that, look, I'm not super experienced, but I'm so keen to learn. I want to try new things. I want to grow. I want to evolve. I want to feel or, or figure out how to make you feel good. And I'm telling you, 95% of the women were like, cool, that sounds exciting. Every now and then a woman would say to him, look, I'm sorry, that's just not what I'm looking for. I want a guy that's a bit more experienced. And he goes, cool, great. Bye. Like, I hope you find that. I genuinely hope you fucking find that. So I promise most women are nice and they're going to be nicer to you than you have been to yourself. Again, if you've been judging yourself, you're the one that's being a dick to yourself. And then you're worrying that other people will. You're fucking doing it. So the next thing that comes up, and it's not so much an insecurity, it's more just a thought that a lot of guys who are virgins have is, if I could just lose my virginity, all of my problems would be solved. And then added onto that is, and I would finally be happy. I have so many things to say to this. Achieving one goal is going to make you happier, but it doesn't solve all of your problems. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't achieve goals. Obviously, the more goals you achieve, you start to respect yourself. You love the process. It's better than sitting around watching Netflix and jerking your dick and drinking too much, right? Achieving goals and success is way more fulfilling. But don't assume that achieving one fucking goal is going to make you happy. It won't. It's the first goal. You've started the process. It's like you took step one. Now you have a thousand more steps to do before you die. Probably more like 10,000 steps. Self-improvement is a lifelong endeavor. I wrote an article with that exact title. And the point of the article was self-improvement is something that you just embrace and do for the rest of your life. It becomes who you are. It's like brushing your teeth. You don't sit there and brush your teeth one time and go, I have great dental health now for the rest of my life. No, we understand it's a continuous thing like watering your garden. That's another really good example. If you have a garden, you water it every day. You love it. You look after it. You nurture it. The same with children. The same if you have a pet. All of these things, we understand that there's like a continual upkeep there. And so the same with goals. And so to pin all of your hopes and dreams on losing your virginity and thinking that that will just solve everything and you'll be happy for the rest of your life. No, 
you will have other goals to achieve after that. Now, will it make you happier? Yes, of course. Like sex is fucking amazing. And if this is something that's bothering you and it is something that you're very excited, again, use excitement. If you're very excited to lose your virginity and explore that side of yourself and explore women and get to know them and intimacy and love and connection and all of that stuff, and the sexual pleasure, all of that stuff, yes, that will make you way happier than not having sex. Sex is fucking amazing. Let me make that goddamn clear. It's really fun. It's really fun. Get excited and fired up about how fun it's going to be to have more sex. It's really fun. But you don't just have sex and then go, great, now everything's perfect. And I love myself and I love all humanity. You will love humanity and yourself more. But you'll have stuff to do after that. So I want to make that really clear and give you some perspective. Losing your virginity is amazing. It's so fucking beautiful. But it's the start of your self-improvement journey. You'll then go on to do other things. And that doesn't mean you're sitting there perpetually unhappy, right? Make sure you're very grateful when you lose your virginity. Be grateful to her. Be grateful to the universe. Be grateful to self-improvement. Be grateful to the people that have helped you. All of that stuff. And then you move on to the next goal. You achieve that. You're grateful for that. You, you, you step into this process of gratitude and achievement. Those two things are the, the keys to a fulfilling life. Achieving goals and being grateful every time you achieve a goal. Don't just achieve a bunch of goals and not be grateful. Because that's just a rat race that will leave you miserable and unsatisfied. Make sure you're using gratitude. This next one is a big one. I struggle so much with anxiety and self-doubt in social situations, especially around women I like or also women that I'm attracted to. So this one comes up so much with so many of my clients, right? Where they, they put this fucking pressure on themselves in social, social situations to be this like smooth Casanova. And the answer here is so simple, guys. It's the answer that I've given you all a million times. Give yourself permission to suck. You're probably just not going to be good in social situations if you're a virgin or if you haven't had a lot of sex or if you haven't talked to a lot of people or if you haven't talked to a lot of women. You're probably just going to be nervous, especially if you like them. And so you take a deep breath, you embrace the fact that you're going to do a shitty job and that's okay. And you walk over to her and you just say whatever's on your mind. You can start with, yo, I am so nervous because you are so pretty and I never normally do this. I'm probably going to look silly, but you're really pretty or you're really hot. You're really cute. You put your hand out. I'm Andy. You shake your hand. You talk for a couple of minutes. It can be the worst conversation ever. You can, in the middle of the conversation, literally say, man, I'm so awkward. Hey, I'm doing such a bad job of this. Hey, I'm trying my best, but holy shit, like this is awkward, right? You can fucking embrace that shit. I have done that so many times. You guys cannot imagine, especially at the start when I was learning to talk to women and I was just so awful at it. I was so nervous. I would literally just in the middle of the conversation, if there was like an awkward silence, I'd be like, man, this is so awkward. Hey, and then she would giggle and be like, yeah, a little bit. And I'd be like, what do people normally talk about when they hit on women? Like, how do you actually do this? Can you give me some tips? Like, what am I supposed to say right now? Like, this is so fucking awkward. This is difficult. Why do they make it look so easy in the movies? This is fucking hard. And then we laugh together. We're now on the same team. We've both ex embraced the elephant in the room, which is the nervousness and the awkwardness. And we're both now on the same team. We're trying to overcome the awkwardness together rather than, oh shit, I'm trying to overcome it on myself. You literally have a teammate when you're honest with women. That's why I push honesty and authenticity so much for women and men, because it means you're both on the same fucking team and you're not sitting there trying to have this like mask of perfection or this mask of like James Bond, alpha male, perfect, big dick, Chad God. No, you just be the nervous, awkward guy who talks to a lot of women. And that last thing I just said is key, talk to a lot of women. If you want to get to a point where you're not struggling with anxiety or doubt or, you know, any of this kind of stuff, you just have to do this a lot. You'll eventually get good at it. But so many of you are just expecting yourself to get good at it when you haven't put in the repetitions. It's like going to the gym one time and saying, I should be able to squat 200 kilograms. It's like, you've never fucking done squats. Why would you be good at this stuff? So put in the actual reps, earn that confidence. It's not something that you just have. You have to earn it. This next one is very, very, very common. I'm worried that I'll never find someone who's willing to have sex with me. And even if I do, I'll probably just be a disappointment in bed. So we've already given so many tips and advice for this one. Really, the key one is give yourself permission to suck. Just try a bunch of different things. Explore. Embrace the fact that you're not going to be good about it, or you're not necessarily going to be good at the start. You can do a good enough job. You'll probably find that you do a better job than a lot of guys just by being willing to explore and learn and not putting on that mask of like trying to be perfect. But the second part of this, or sorry, the first part, which is I'm worried that I'll never find someone who's willing to have sex with me. There are like 1 billion women on the planet right now who are willing to have sex with you. 
you just have to go outside and ask a lot of women. Obviously, improve yourself in the meantime, you know, dress better. I gave a lot of tips at the start. Improve yourself, but it's just a numbers game. Like you're not trying to, here's a good way I phrase it. If you're trying to sell a house, you only need one buyer. You don't need everybody out on the street to agree that your house is amazing and to want to buy it. You just need one fucking person to buy that goddamn house. And so the same with sex, the same with women. You just need one woman to say, yes, I'll have sex with you. It's just a numbers game. It's self-improvement and numbers game. So don't think that you have to be like fucking perfect with this shit. No, you just go and talk to a lot of women and find the ones that like you. So the next one is super common as well. I struggle with body image issues. Maybe I'm not attractive enough. Good news, motherfucker. Attractiveness is something that you can improve. It's not static. You have the ability to improve yourself, your looks, your confidence, your sense of style, everything about yourself. You can absolutely go from, if you want numbers, you can go from a fucking three out of 10 to an eight out of 10. You absolutely can. Now you need to be thinking if you're going to have that big of a jump, you need to be thinking in terms of years, especially if you're someone that is really obese or something like that, or you have a lot of weight to lose, or maybe you're like ridiculously skinny and you have zero muscle. Think in terms of years, but this isn't a binary thing. It's not like you go from unattractive to attractive. It's like a, a scale, a gradient. And so you improve yourself every single day. And while you are improving yourself, you go out and you talk to as many women as you can, or you go on Tinder or Hinge or Bumble or whatever, and you talk to as many women as you possibly humanly can while you're improving yourself. I have talked about this so many millions of times, but I have gone through my own transformation journey over the years you know, on the left there, obese, very chubby, zero muscle. On the right, that's me now. Here's me as well. On the left, obese. On the right, abs, muscles, all that good shit. I've been through this journey myself. And so many of my coaching clients have gone through this exact journey. I have so many videos on my channel. You can just search for weight loss motivation or just search for the word motivation. I've got a few people that have just gone through this like amazing transformation where they were like really obese and just had no female interest to like, now they look like an absolute killer. And so please don't feel like this lack of attractiveness that you have is like a static permanent thing. It's absolutely not. Self-improvement exists. And if you feel like you have body image issues, you can work on that. You can improve that. The second thing that I would add is don't feel like you have to be this perfect like Chad. I know it can be very easy to compare yourself to people that you see on the internet or maybe people on my forums or some of the coaching clients that I've worked with and I, I show their you know, progress. It can be very easy to compare yourself to those people. You don't have to be perfect in order to have sex. You really fucking don't. Now, I would like you to max yourself out and improve yourself and work on yourself and all of that shit, but don't sit there and wait until you have an elite top 1% body before you go and talk to women. Start talking to women now and you will just slowly upgrade yourself over time while you're working on this thing. And then the final one a lot of guys worry about is I worry that I will have limited options because of my lack of sexual experience. This is a really polite way of saying I'm scared that I will only be able to have sex with people that I'm not very attracted to. So many things I can say to this. The first thing is improve yourself. The more attractive you are, the better you dress, the more confident you are, which just comes with practice. All of that stuff, the better you are at communication, all of that shit means that you sleep with people that are more attracted to you or more attractive, sorry, to you. And they will be more attracted to you as well. If you're someone that's overweight, just losing the 30, 40 pounds, whatever it is that you need to lose, just losing that makes you like 10 times more attractive. It makes women be 10 times more into you because you look like you take yourself seriously. You know, attractiveness is basically the outside cover of a book. You're not even going to pick the book up if it hasn't got a decent, at least a decent cover. And so work on yourself so you have better options. The second thing to say is the more confident you get or the more sexual experience you get, which is what confidence is, it's just experience. The more sexual experience you get, the more options you'll have because you'll know your value. You'll know your worth. You'll be able to say no. Like you'll know what you want. You'll screen for it. You'll have a more confident personality. You'll have a more masculine personality and all of this stuff. So the answer here is so fucking simple. It's improve yourself, right? It's throw yourself into the self-improvement game. Don't hold back, go all in. So those are some of the pain points that a lot of you virgins or inexperienced guys might have. There are probably others. You're welcome to leave them in the comments and maybe I'll do a podcast on them if there's enough of them or if I like them. But I really just want to underline a couple of things here. Like you're not less of a man just because you haven't had sex yet. 
It's just a thing you haven't done yet. And so the answer is, whatever the steps are that I need to take to have that thing, I just need to do those steps. That's it. You just haven't done the steps that are required. Now, you might say, I've done a little bit of the steps or I've tried. It's like, that's really good. Good fucking job. There's just other steps you now have to take and then you will have sex. There is no one that is inherently like unlovable or unattractive or unsexable, if you want to use that word. Nobody. But you might have to improve yourself to get there. You might have to talk to a hundred, a thousand women to get there. You might have to go and do some of the things that you've been procrastinating or avoiding, like taking better Tinder pictures, working through my Tinder guide. You know, you might even want to sign up for coaching and I can push you with that shit. But the steps that you're going to need to take, take those steps. There's nothing wrong with you. You just haven't had sex yet. It's just a thing you haven't done. As I said, if you would like help with this, we would love to have you in the coaching program. Like I said, we've worked with so many guys that are virgins or just inexperienced. We've worked with guys with erectile dysfunction, all sorts of insecurities, guys who are overweight. We've helped them lose weight. We would love to have you in the program. I will leave a link in the description below to that. Click that button. We can jump on a call and talk about it, or you can just sign straight up if you're ready to go. We would love to have you. But guys, if you're inexperienced, if you're a virgin, Go out there and actually fucking do the things that are required to change it. You deserve to have sex. Sex is really fucking amazing. It really is. Get excited. Get fired up. Get passionate about having sex. And then go out there and make that shit happen. You know, as always, go out there, crush those goals and have sex. It's fucking fun. Really fun.